An old man named Peter is in his estate recording a message to his daughter, Selene. It is implied that he and Selene are no longer close and have turned away from each other. In his cryptic message, Peter bids farewell to Selene, reminding her that when the door to one world closes, another one becomes open to them. Afterwards, Peter rubs blood over his face. Peter walks over a mysterious gaze bow together with a few hoodlums who are devoted cultists. They reach the center, where a large mysterious mirror is placed. One of the black-hooded cultists recites a chant along with Peter until a gigantic monstrous creature emerges from the mirror. He willingly offers himself to the giant creature, allowing the creature to pick him up and devour him. Some time later, Selene hears about her father's death and listens to his recording. Inside her room, she tears up in sadness and expresses her grief by talking to her boyfriend, Rich. She is confused with her father's farewell message and nonchalantly thinks that he disappeared because of an illness. Regardless, Selene decides to head to Peter's estate to take care of his things. Selene and Rich are later picked up by their friend Nick and his new girlfriend, April. On their way, Selene stares at old pictures with her father on her phone. Upon arriving at the estate, Selene tells everyone that it used to be a cemetery and her father bought it when she was still a child. She looks around the garden, where comes across a dead rabbit and an elderly woman. The elderly woman identifies herself as Edda, the longtime housekeeper who was able to watch over Selene as a child. Edda reveals her quirky personality, telling Selene how she thinks the cats must have killed the rabbits for her because she likes rabbit pie. The two reunite with a hug as Edda consoles Selene from Peter's death. Selene proceeds to the garden and places a makeshift memorial for her father. Rich on the other side lets Selene spend a quiet time as he walks around the estate. He finds two dead rabbits and decides to sneak them inside his backpack. Later, Rich meets Nick in the estate and shows him the dead rabbit. Nick, who used to go hunting with his father, deduces that the cuts from the rabbit came from a knife. In effect, Rich begins to suspect that somebody is intentionally murdering the rabbits. He asks Nick to pick up the remaining dead rabbits around the estate, worrying for Selene's well-being. On the other hand, Nick thinks that the dead rabbits are caused by a fox, advising Nick not to be too worried. Around the same time, April is in one of the estate's rooms, staring at a painting of a creature. Edda shows up and talks about a legend of the old gods. According to Edda, the old gods are the real architects of the universe, and that they reside in a parallel plane to the world. The old gods remain powerful in the other dimension, waiting for an opportunity to move through the portal into the world. April becomes uncomfortable around Edda, causing her to subtly walk out of the room. She goes to the corner and takes an unidentified pill. In the meantime, Selene quietly takes a bubble bath. She is still in the process of accepting her father's death, who she still cared for despite their estrangement. Just then, a bright light shines from outside the bathroom door. She goes to check it and finds a broken drawer containing a few books. Right before she starts reading it, Rich arrives and interrupts her. That night, Selene, Rich, Nick, and April hang out by the pool area. They set up an impromptu party, helping Selene deal with her father's death. When the night deepens, Selene and Nick are the only ones left in the pool. As he boldly approaches her, Nick briefly asks how her relationship with Rich is going. He attempts to corner Selene in the pool, but immediately moves away when Rich wakes up from his nap. Selene leaves the pool and knocks at April's room to check up on her. She catches April holding a pill container and notices a long scar on one of her forearms. April then explains that she got the scar from a car accident when she was younger, but it is still painful so she has been taking pain relievers. She tells Selene to keep it a secret from Nick as she doesn't want him to know. Afterwards, Selene curiously asks April about her relationship with Nick. Selene shares that Nick previously tried to flirt with her at the pool, immediately making April angry. Later, Selene and Rich are in the bedroom discussing plans for the estate. Rich has decided on staying with their original plan, which is to take all the things in the house and sell the estate. Selene, on the other hand, has second thoughts as she feels attached to the estate, remembering how it meant a lot to their family. Rich then reminds her that they have to handle the expenses in upkeeping the estate, as well as paying Edda and the gardeners. While sleeping, Selene dreams about herself walking towards the large mirror in the gaze bow, where she sees a large-looking creature on the other side. Startled, she abruptly wakes up and seemingly catches sight of another unusual creature lifting up their blankets. Selene begins to panic and switches on the lampshade to awaken Rich. To her surprise, she does not find the creature anywhere and the blankets remain untouched. Unable to fall back to sleep, Selene checks out the book from her father's broken drawer. She scans through the pages, discovering several Latin texts along with pictures. When she stumbles upon the large mirror from her dream, she uses an online translator to understand the Latin text beside it, which tells about a process of give and take from one world to another.
Confused, Celine tries to deduce the meaning behind the text. Just then, she notices Nick with a hoodlum in the yard. Nick was covered in blood and was being dragged into the woods by the hoodlums. Startled, she drops to the floor and sneaks outside the house. Celine finds Etta casually sitting and asks her about Nick and the hoodlums. However, Etta denies having seen any hoodlum around the estate. Etta also says she saw Nick leaving the estate a while ago. Despite Celine's insistence that she was certain of what she saw, Etta thinks that it is only a manifestation of grief. She then asks Etta the meaning behind her father's cryptic message, wanting to know if Peter was sick. In reply, Etta says that Peter had stomach cancer when he passed. But apart from his sickness, Peter died on his own terms for a cause he believed in. When Celine opens up about the book she found, Etta reveals that it contains principles that she and Peter believed in. Peter and Etta believe that there is another dimension next to their world, run by the guardian between both worlds named Janus. As a guardian, Janus is capable of turning pain into happiness and oppression into freedom since Janus understands what every person has been through. But for Janus to do so, the person must walk through the large mirror, which happens to be a doorway or portal to the other dimension. Later, Etta reveals to Celine that her father is not dead and that he is only in the other world waiting for her. The next morning, Rich goes to their bedroom to check on Celine. He tells her that Nick already left the estate after an argument with April. Celine gets up from the bed and rushes over to April, who she finds at the door entrance, preparing to leave as well. She quickly apologizes to her for what happened with Nick, and April easily forgives her. Celine brings up that she saw Nick last night, worrying that something bad had happened to him. On the other hand, April dismisses it, no longer wanting to talk about him. Before leaving, April thanks Elaine for inviting her to her family home. April rides a cab and is on her way out of the estate, but is intercepted by two hoodlums. The two hoodlums are blocking the gate, causing the cab driver to get out of the cab. The cab driver tries to talk to them, but one of the hoodlums knocks the driver unconscious. Witnessing the scene, April hurriedly goes to the driver's seat, but before she can drag away, a hoodlum with a hammer approaches the car window. Around the same time, Rich resumes packing the remaining things inside the house. He finds himself in a room containing many old paintings. In one of the storage boxes, Rich uncovers a photo album of Celine. Moreover, Rich finds out that Peter's property has been transferred to Edda instead of Celine. Meanwhile, Celine is in another room staring at the paintings of a gigantic monstrous creature. Rich goes to Celine and shows her the property deed. She is then confused, wondering why her father did not let her inherit the estate. Rich suspects that Etta and Peter had an affair, but Celine doubts it, as Etta was married for 40 years, while Peter has not been with anyone since his marriage with Celine's mother. As the couple continues to speculate, the two of them become suspicious of the place. Celine shares to Rich that she saw Nick bleeding and being dragged to the woods, feeling misunderstood that no one seems to believe her. In turn, Rich shows Celine a social media post recently created by Nick in which he writes about his breakup with April. Celine stares at Rich's phone in confusion and refuses to believe that Nick is alright. Slowly, Celine realizes that everyone around her, including her boyfriend Rich, is treating her like she is a crazy person. She defends herself, telling Rich that what she saw was not caused by her vulnerable state. Celine grows frustrated, so she decides to finish packing the remaining stuff on her own. She asks Rich to leave the estate and get a train back instead, before walking out of the room. Later that day, Celine explores around the garden when she steps onto a bloody grass. She approaches the large mirror where she sees a reflection of her father from the other side. Celine is evidently stunned to see her father alive, asking him to enlighten her about what happened. Peter tells Celine that there is a way for him to return to their world. He instructs her to come to the other dimension and get him, using the writings in his book. Celine cannot remember the exact Latin text, so Peter helps her recite the chant in front of the portal. Peter reaches out his hand to Celine, but just when she is about to hold his hand, a blinding light emerges. Celine finds herself with Peter inside his study area. Peter brings her a cup of tea, saying that he has long been waiting for that moment. He expresses his regret for not being able to say goodbye to Celine properly. Celine, however, is still confused and does not understand him. Peter then explains that she only needs to accept that the world is more complicated than what people think. There are two halves making up a whole, but people only have access to one half. According to him, he was very sick and the city no longer did him any good. It was through the help of Janus that he was able to start his life again. In exchange for giving away his body, Janus gave him a chance to relive a life together with his dead wife, Lisa. On another note, Peter feels apologetic towards Celine, who has been consumed by grief. 
All of a sudden, Peter subtly taunts Selene, saying that Selene was too obsessed by her grief that she decided to chase the dead in the other dimension. It is then revealed that Peter's soul is corrupted as he is no longer the father she remembers. Peter explains that he willingly offered his body to Janus and the gods in the other dimension. However, Janus did not like how Peter's actions were selfish. Janus has seen through Peter's real intentions. The Guardian knows that Peter voluntarily gave his body as an offering to the gods only because he needed and wanted to be free from his cancer. On the contrary, Janus is looking for a person who is pure. Peter tells Selene that Janus needs her and that they are all needed to be set free. Selene, however, is unable to grasp what Peter is saying. She hurriedly leaves the room, only to find the stairwell full of strange-looking insects. When Selene runs to the door, she sees a completely different place, finally recognizing that she is in the other dimension. Janus shows up behind her, claiming that it is time to bring the two worlds together. In an instant, Selene is stabbed by Janus and falls unconscious. Janus takes over the body of Selene and walks back into the human world. Meanwhile, Rich steps out of the house and is about to leave the estate when Etta appears. Etta mentions that the estate was so important for Peter that it became like a monument to him. Rich then confronts Etta about the property deed, insisting that Selene should have gotten the estate because she is Peter's family. In defense, Etta says that they have no right to question Peter's decisions. At that moment, Janice arrives in the guise of Selene, and Etta quickly bows before her, bringing confusion to Rich. She walks straight to Rich and gives him a kiss. She also tells Rich that she no longer cares about who the estate goes to and wants him to stay with her. Rich, who has no idea that the Selene in front of him is fake, easily gives in. Just then, Selene points a knife at Rich, but before he can react, a hoodlum sneaks up behind him and knocks him unconscious. Some time later, Rich wakes up in a makeshift building inside the estate. He finds April and the cab driver bound and gagged like him. Rich crawls in your April, just when Etta and Selene arrive. It is then revealed that Etta is also part of the cultists. She has been collecting dead rabbits and collects the blood as an offering to the gods in the other dimension. Etta is about to take the blood out from a rabbit, but fake Selene insists on using human blood this time. Rich and April stare in horror as Selene kills the cab driver with a knife and collects blood from him. Janus reveals that she is not the real Selene, telling April and Rich that she has two faces. She also informs April and Rich that they will become gifts to the monstrous old and new gods in the other world. Through Janus' instructions, Etta rubs the collected blood on April and Rich's faces. That night, the black hooded cultists gather outside the makeshift building, bringing April and Rich. As it turns out, the building is set to house one of the creatures from the other dimension. Etta recites another chant, intending to offer April to the gods first. She tells Rich that he will fail to save April, like he failed to save Selene from her obsession in grief. Soon, a huge creature emerges from the makeshift building, and Etta declares that their offering has been accepted by the creature. The creature slowly approaches April, but Rich manages to attack the hoodlums. Rich carries April with him and the two of them run to the forest, while the creature ends up taking the bodies of Edda and the few hoodlums. Rich and April briefly stop in the middle of the forest, distraught by the sight of the creature. Shortly after, a dark cloud appears above them, indicating that they are being watched by another monster deity. Just then, two hoodlums sneak behind them. One of the hoodlums attacks Rich with a hammer, while the other hoodlum strangles April. Motivated by survival instinct, Rich steals the hammer and kills both of the hoodlums with it. While running, the monster deity releases a tentacle that emerges from one of the tree trunks. The tentacle expands and creates a big hole, sucking April away into the hole. Rich and April try to resist by holding onto each other tightly, but they inevitably fail. April gets separated from Rich and is forcefully taken into the hole. Rich exhaustingly walks away and falls to the ground, only to see Nick's dead body lying beside him. Startled, Rich quickly gets up and runs. Eventually, Rich is cornered by another lingering hoodlum and takes him to the rest of the cultists. The dark cloud reappears and hovers above the gazebo, revealing an enormous octopus-like creature. All of the black-hooded cultists bow before the creature, who is then identified as Janus' favorite son, Gulhu, the god of the sea. Janus later approaches Rich, informing him that he too will soon be separated from his flesh. Janus encourages Rich to not feel sad, as he is fortunate enough to be part of the process. Soon after, Janus speaks to the cultists, declaring that he and his son Kuldu will soon be free. He brings together his two faces from the two parallel dimensions. Janus uses Selene's body as one of his faces and strips off the black hood. From the other dimension, Janus' second face emerges from the portal. 
The two faces come together, and a mating ritual ensues to unite the two faces as one. Meanwhile, Rich watches the mating ritual in agony. He becomes fueled by anger, causing him to attack the black-hooded cultists. Rich picks up a knife and points it at the creature, but in the end aims the knife on his own neck. Although it is barely mentioned, this 2021 British science fiction horror film presents Thulhu, a monstrous deity worshipped by cultists. Thulhu is one of the creatures written by H.P. Lovecraft, a famous American horror writer. On another note, this is included among the many films that have a low-budget production, so it is suggested for viewers to proceed without much expectations. To be fair, the film starts off interesting. There is already a presence of the CGI monster in the early parts. The CGI effect is decent enough to bring a mysterious vibe to the creatures in the portal. However, as the plot begins to unfold, it becomes obvious how it is poorly structured. The in-between acts of Celine trying to learn more about the monstrous creatures has become too long and tedious, only for the film to have no tension. There are still parts of the story that needed to be clarified, but the creators of the film chose to settle with a very abrupt ending. This is the reason why the film could not arrive at its full potential. Even if the film was intended to have an open ending, the viewer should still be able to understand what has happened. Not to mention how most of the scenes were so dark that it was difficult to see anything. These points all add up to making the viewers completely confused. Overall, the film is watchable and somewhat entertaining for those who are used to watching television horror films from the 80s and 90s. Other viewers, however, will find this dull and boring. It would have been better if it was made as a 20-minute content-packed short film.